Hello everyone, Melody here, Mama of Four, and our blended family of six. Welcome to Homeschool Happy Hour. Today we are going to talk about preparing for high school and CLEP testing. So if you are getting ready for that stage of your homeschool, if you're just really curious on what that looks like, what that takes, or if you're in it already, please stick with us and let's talk about it. Before we go any further, if you are new here, my name is Melody. I am in my 10th year of homeschooling. I currently am homeschooling a seventh grader, uh, a high schooler, we'll say ninth, 10th grade. Um, I have a junior in the public school and I have a graduate from the public school in our blended family. The younger two have homeschooled throughout their education. The older two have primarily gone to public school throughout their education. This channel is all about homeschooling and homeschool life, curriculum, all those things, all through a secular homeschooler's viewpoint. So if those things are of interest to you at all, please take a second to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and follow along as we go through all the homeschool things. Today specifically, I wanted to talk to you about two things. Number one, preparing to homeschool high school and what that has looked like for us. Now, absolutely, there's more than one way to do these things. It really depends on what state you live in because no matter what you do, you need to make sure that you are in line with whatever your state's regulations are for homeschooling. If you're not sure what those are, you can go to hslda.org and get a list of the homeschooling guidelines, requirements, however you want to put that, by state so that you can make sure that you're in compliance wherever you are at. I live in Washington state and so all of the things that I'm talking about will be through the lens of following the Washington state guidelines and doing the things that we need to do in our state. But our state is one, it's considered one of the more strict homeschooling states. Although to be fair, I don't really think it's that strict. So if you're in a state that has less restrictions than us, you should be more than okay by going along with these guidelines a little bit. I will also be talking about CLEP testing. What is CLEP testing? How does that wrap into our high school experience? And what, how are we going to be or how are we using that? How could you use that? All of those things. I do have another video out there talking about public school, high school from a homeschool mom's perspective. And if you watch that video, that'll probably answer any of your questions about why I want to homeschool high school. But if you haven't watched that video, just a quick recap. It's really common for people to expect homeschoolers to switch to public school when they get to high school. Of course, you're gonna put them in public school in high school, right? I mean, that's a very common thing that we hear. And I think that while some homeschoolers do choose to put their kids in full-time public school when it comes to high school, that it's becoming more common that homeschoolers don't choose that, particularly as secular homeschoolers. Some of the reasons that people argue that you should choose it is because they question whether or not a homeschool parent has the education, the skills, the ability to provide their student with the education level necessary for high school education. Some of the reasons why we as homeschoolers choose not to put our kids into the public high school is because we don't believe that that environment provides our kid with the education, the social experience or anything that they need at that age. It doesn't support them as individuals, doesn't provide them with their optimal education. And another common argument is, well, how are they gonna get into college? I assure you homeschoolers absolutely can attend college. It is becoming more and more common. Colleges accept homeschoolers and there's no reason to believe that your child should not be able to go to college just because they are homeschooled. Now, some of the things that we're doing in our home to ensure that that path is an option for our kids. One, when we decided we were going to homeschool or high school, which was a really long time ago, I started investigating a few things. I contacted my local high school and I got a list of their high school graduation requirements. I got onto my state education website and I got the state's graduation requirements for high school. I contacted 
a four-year university and a two-year university and I got their requirements for entrance into their universities. Now gathering this information gave me a really clear view of what we did or did not need to cover through our high school years in order to have college as a, a pathway, as an option for my kiddos. Now some of the things that I noticed is that the high schools don't always require the same thing as what the colleges require. And if you're going to a two-year college versus a four-year college, their requirements can be a little bit different. Now, as a homeschooler, we actually have the option of either writing our own transcripts or there are transcript services that you can get where they will help build a transcript for you based on the information you give them and what your child has done through the high school years. Now keep in mind, even though they're in high school, does not mean you need to start replicating the public school experience. You can continue to homeschool in the way that you've homeschooled them throughout their education. You are just going to want to, at this level, the number one thing is record. Record, record, rec Ugh, I can't talk, keep records. It's really important that you have records of everything they've done because once they're finished with high school and they're getting ready to go to college, it's going to be a lot harder than you think to look back and be like, now did we do that? Uh, where could we get credit for this? And trying to get all of that information put together at the end is probably a lot, overwhelm a lot more overwhelming than it needs to be. So keeping a record of that information as you go is going to make you feel so much better. And it's going to make the process a lot smoother when you get to it. I did follow another homeschool mom and she had some forms that you could purchase that had like your four year course planning and that would allow you to kind of keep track. I do have that for my kiddo. It's kind of written out loosely. Keep in mind, if you're doing a course, for example, uh, music. My kids take piano lessons. So those piano lessons and that practice that they do all week, they don't need to take another special course. They don't need to have a special textbook. I don't need to set aside an exact time frame for them to get a credit towards piano or depending on how many hours they've put in multiple credits towards piano classes. Now, your credits are going to be determined based on how many hours you put in. And I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I will try and look it up and pop it up here. There's a certain number you, a number of hours invested in a subject to where it would be considered a half credit. And then there's a certain number of hours that would be invested into a subject for it to be considered a full credit. Now, if you're looking over the course of years, you could see how a kiddo could get multiple credits in piano or in music through taking piano lessons. Another thing is in the high school, like in my high school, or my, not my high school, but the public school here, kids who do sports, they don't have to take PE because they already do sports. Classes like health, which are typically a graduation, sorry guys, I can't talk today, I can't say the word graduation, are typically a graduation requirement those are things that we cover in our day-to-day -day conversations. It's not something we have to set aside a time or a curriculum for. Now, we do in our home, we dedicate some time to sex ed and healthy relationships and mental health and those kinds of things, but you don't have to. It can just be, we're talking about this on a regular basis. My kids are learning these things. You can get credit for that time without it being formal. Um, something else to consider, classes that they have as extracurriculars at the high school or classes like foods class. They have, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's ag is what they call it, but it's basically, it's a farming class at my school. They have a class where kids can get credit for learning about animals and um, gardening and that kind of stuff. So if you, in your home, have animals that you're taking care of, I'm talking like cows, horses, goats, chickens, whatever they are, or a garden that you're running and your kid is participating and helping with these things, they can get a high school credit 
for those activities. If you travel with your family at all, that time where you're traveling and going to new places, you can get a high school credit for those activities. You don't have to have classes for everything that you do, for all the credits you get. The thing is, is about high school, just like any other year, you can be creative. You can gather your credits through your life experience because isn't that like the amazing part about homeschooling is that we get to live and experience the world around us. We don't have to be stuck at a desk. That doesn't change when it gets to high school. Now, if you enjoy having that desk time or your kid enjoys having that desk time, great, that's fine too, absolutely. But just, you don't have to once you get to the high school levels. I did, I received a comment from somebody the other day. I think I posted it on Instagram because I was just ugh, blown away by this person. They were saying that once you get to high school, it's not supposed to be fun anymore. You're not supposed to enjoy yourself anymore. This idea of fun learning that I've been talking about for years is basically uh, doesn't apply anymore when you get to high school. And I just, I don't think that's true. I think absolutely it applies. We can always have fun learning. We can always enjoy what we're doing. The benefits of this are clear. If we enjoy what we're doing, we are taking in the information better. We're more likely to retain it and we're more likely to want to be lifelong learners. That doesn't change in high school. We also have the opportunity, or not we, but our kids have the opportunity to really get to know themselves and get to know what they love so that when they get to graduation or wanting to go to college or wanting to go into the military or wanting to do a trade or wanting to be an entrepreneur, they have an idea of what they're passionate about, of what they really want to do. And as homeschoolers, hopefully they've had time to really invest in that. So for example, my younger daughter, she's not in high school yet, but she loves to bake. She spends a ton of time baking and finding new recipes and researching and decorating cakes. That absolutely could be a high school credit. Uh, my other daughter, if you're worried about like, well, but I don't have, I don't have the knowledge. I don't have the skills. I can't teach them everything they might want to know. That's okay. No one expects you to. Well, some people might expect you to, but don't listen to them. Nobody who knows what they're talking about actually expects you to know every single subject. Saying that you're homeschooling your kids through high school is not some claim to genius, okay? We have access to resources. We have access to multiple support systems that we can use. My older homeschooler, for example, she has decided that she loves to crochet. Well, I have no idea how to crochet. I've tried before, but it's just, my brain doesn't work that way. I have no idea how to do it. And now she crochets these amazing, intricate things. Like she did a dragon and she has this little mushroom that pops up and down and a rabbit and all these different creations. Well, guess what? She can get a high school credit towards that. That is absolutely an art or craft type credit that we could use on her college transcripts. And I didn't teach her how to do that. She taught herself. She has access to resources that she can invest further in the things that she wants to do. She also likes to make jewelry. I don't know how to make jewelry. She was, for a while, she was really interested in World War II. So she did a ton of independent research in World War II. Hello, more high school credits for that. We can gather credits on the things that we're already doing. So as far as curriculum choices, the sky's the limit. There's so many different curriculum choices out there. I do have my high schooler doing one online course now because I know so many colleges have moved towards online classes and because it's most likely that she's probably going to do her first two years at a community college, which really relies heavily on online courses. And I want her to have a little bit of experience with that before she steps into the college course. But I don't think that gaining these credits from other, we'll say non-traditional or in non-traditional ways is going to hinder her in any way. In fact, I feel like it's going to give her the I guess stamina, if you will, to want to continue with her education and continue her learning while her peers are feeling totally burnt out and they have no interest in moving forward at that time, they need a break. So 
that's that. That's my spiel about high school. Um, preparing for high school is really super easy. Gather the requirements from your schools, gather the requirements from your state, gather the requirements from colleges, and then look and see what am I doing that I can apply to these requirements. That's it. That's, that's all you need to do. I mean, at the high school level, we do a little more work than we did at the junior high elementary school level because, I don't know, they're older, they're capable of doing more, they retain more, it's not a big deal. Do you have to? Uh, is there a rule that says you need to do high school for four years? Could you do high school in two or three years? Absolutely, if you're gaining the credits and you feel like your child's ready to move on to the next step, can they be done early? Absolutely. Um, the prisoner is currently on track to graduate from high school. I think she'll be, oh gosh, 15? Let me think about this. Well, I don't know. It's not a hard set date. So 15 or 16 is when she should be about ready to graduate from high school and move on to uh, community college courses for her AA. If for some reason, for any reason whatsoever, we decided we wanted to take longer and you wanted to spread out your high school courses uh, for a long period of time, then do it. When your kid is in junior high stage, when they've moved past the younger elementary type material curriculum and investment in their education, and they're in that junior high stage, personally, I really would encourage you to be thinking about what are they doing now that we could use towards high school credits because you can earn high school credits at the junior high stage. And then maybe you're earning high school credits for six years. The, the timeline is pretty arbitrary. You can choose the timeline that works best for you, best for your kids, and take a deep breath. It doesn't have to be stressful. It doesn't have to be unpleasant. You absolutely can do it. Now, all that being said, let's jump real quick into CLEP testing. What is a CLEP test? A CLEP test is a college level, I think college level exam preparation. I'm saying that wrong. This is what I get for not studying before I did my video. But basically it's a college level exam that you can take online. I believe they have 30 something different tests. They have foreign language, math, history, science, all kinds of different courses, psychology, sociology, I think, that you can take. And it is about $90 for the exam. If you get on their website, um, put that right here, then you can look and see what all the exams are. Along with the exams for like $10, you can get a study guide, you can take practice courses, you can find links to online resources that are free, free guys, free courses to study for your CLEP exams that will prepare you to take this test. Now the test is a pass fail test. And if you pass it, you get college credits towards one semester of that course. So if you choose to take algebra one and you pass it, now you have a college credit, which you can use as your high school credits and almost all colleges, I don't wanna say all, but almost all colleges accept CLEP credits towards their graduation. So if you want your student to be taking CLEP exams throughout their high school years, then by the time they're ready to go to college, they can have potentially a year or more worth of college courses already complete that they were able to prepare for on their own. Now, I believe that the exams are about $90 for an exam right now, which if you compare $90 to just even a community college course, that's really inexpensive. And you can study for it as long as you want. You, there's no timeline. You can prepare for it. When you're ready, you take the test. Uh, if for some reason you don't pass the test, it's not going to count against you when you go to college. There's, there's no punishment for not having passed that test. Uh, but there's definitely an advantage to having those credits going in. This is also a great way in case you have any issues or you're, which you shouldn't, 
but or you're maybe just feeling nervous about proving to somebody that your child has passed or is passed whatever they need to pass or is ready for college, then saying, okay, well, they passed their CLEP exams, it's a pretty clear indicator since they are college level courses. Now, you can also have your child, depending on what college you want to go to, they may require like SATs. Um, I don't know if they still do the ACT or not, but there's different courses that you can, or tests you can take. You can spend time prepping for those tests if you want to. You can just go and do them blind if you want to. Usually it's more of four-year colleges that are looking at those, the two-year colleges. Uh, not always, sometimes they'll just give you an entrance exam to help determine what class level you should start at for like math, uh, those kinds of things. But anyway, if you've never heard of CLEP testing before, go and check it out. Let me know what you think. If you have a high school graduate or a high schooler or a kid going into high school, drop a comment below and let me know what have been, are, or do you think will be your biggest questions or challenges, the things that make you the most nervous, or on the flip side, what are the things that you were nervous about that you discovered later were really not a big deal? I look forward to hearing your guys' comments and seeing what you are working through. Thank you so much. I hope that answered some of your questions. I hope that provided you some encouragement. You absolutely can do this. You can homeschool high school. It will be amazing. In fact, it might be the most fun you've had through your entire homeschool journey. What high school kids are capable of is just spectacular and it's so fun to be on that journey with them as they grow into young adults so again drop those comments and i will catch you next time